Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the next step in my Cinema 4D PC build, choosing my water cooling parts. Before I start, I'd like to give a shout out to the guys at Overclockers UK Water Cooling Forum. This is my first custom loop, and there was a lot of great info there, which prevented me from making some real schoolboy errors. So, cheers, guys. Speaking of which, I'd like to talk a little bit about galvanic corrosion in relation to PC water cooling. Galvanic corrosion can be absolute cancer to a water loop. Corrosion will occur when very different metals uh, react with each other when in contact via a fluid. This reaction will cause one of the metals to st start dissolving and can also do major damage to parts like the water block, radiator, fittings and the pump. It will also build up in the loop and be deposited as gunk in the system. If we look at this chart we can see that the anodic index of nickel, copper and brass are within close range of each other. So a system using these metals will be fairly safe from galvanic corrosion. If we were to introduce aluminium with these metals it would spell big trouble for our water loop. So the golden rule is use nickel, copper and brass together or have a completely aluminium loop. I've chosen to stick to nickel, copper and brass as it gives me a wider range of products to choose from. So let's start with my pump. I decided to go with the Thermal Take Pacific PR22D5 pump and reservoir combo, mainly because I know it will fit in the mounts in my case. It holds 300 millimeters of fluid and the tank is made from heat resistant acrylic. It has five manual speed settings so flow rate can be controlled and the top cap comes with standard G1 quarter inch ports. The unit can be mounted vertically or horizontally, but I will be going vertical as I may add a second loop for GPUs at a later stage. The radiator I've chosen is the EK Coolstream CE560. It's big, but my case is certainly big enough to house it. It weighs around two kilos, has copper fins, copper tubing, brass chambers, and an aluminium steel housing, which of course is on the outside, so is never in contact with the fluid. It has 16 fins per inch, two G1 quarter inch ports, which come pre-fitted with extenders, and it can accommodate four 140 millimeter fans. Onto the CPU block. I went for the XSPC Raystorm Neo. The base plate is made from copper, and not only does it cover the Threadripper's huge integrated heat spreader, but the fins cover all of the Threadripper's dies. The top is made from acrylic, while the hold down bracket is made from solid aluminium. And of course, no aluminium is used in the coolant flow path. It also sports low flow restriction, G1 quarter inch in and out ports, and thermal paste. It also comes with RGB lighting and an RGB controller. I won't be using the controller as my motherboard has or a sink, so the LEDs can plug straight into the board's headers. Okay, now on to connecting all this stuff together. For my tubing, I went with PrimaFlex Advanced LRT Clear Flexible Tubing. This tubing has no DEHP plasticizers, which can seep into your fluid over time and cause gunking and affect your coolant. It also comes with a bottle of system prep to flush your loop with before use, and a bottle of Liquid Utopia to put in your active loop. This will prevent algae buildup and corrosion. I also took the liberty of getting some tube cutters for nice clean cuts free from snags. Okay, fittings. I'd read a lot of people had been having problems getting Primo Flex tubing into other brand fittings, so to keep things sim simple, I stuck with Primo Chill and got their Sky White Flex SX series compression fittings. The base is made from nickel plated brass and they come in 21 different colours. I went with the white so they'd match my case. I also bought these 90 degree angle fittings to go in my pump and radiator. That way I can change the direction of my tubing without putting any unwanted tension on it. They can rotate 360 degrees so the 90 degree angle can be in any direction needed. And they are made from nickel plated brass. I also bought a T fitting and a ball valve fitting so I could construct a drain valve to flush and clean my loop nightmare free. Now onto the fans. I went with four Corsair ML 140mm low noise high static pressure fans. Static pressure is important when trying to push or pull air through obstacles such as a radiator as the flow is more focused than what you'd get from airflow fans. These fans are equipped with magnetic levitation bearings to provide lower noise and longer lifespan and have a control range of 1600 rpm. 
So that's all my calling equipment, guys. I really hope you found some of the information useful. And as always, you can check me out on digitalme.uk. Follow me on social media using the links below. And if you want extra content or just help Digital Me keep going, you can visit my Patreon page using the link in the description or on screen at the end of this video. All right, cheers, guys. Bye.